What's up everybody? Welcome back to part 9 of my Jerome Buting book review, Illusion of Justice Inside Making a Murderer in America's Broken System. Uh, you can pick it up on Amazon, iTunes, bookstores, anywhere, and I highly recommend that you do. He talks about way more than just making a murderer in this book. He talks about other cases and goes into great, great detail more so than I even do in these videos so pick it up you will not be disappointed it is a beauty of a book a tremendous read so here we go part nine we're starting off with where we left off on part eight which is where Thomas Fossbender was asking DNA specialist Sherry Coolhand to try and place Teresa Hallbach in the trailer or the garage. Doesn't matter if she was actually in there or not. He wanted her to place her in either of those places. Thomas Fassbender would call Sherry on a regular basis and let her know when items were coming from the garage or the trailer. Just to, you know, just to give her a heads up. These are items that you could possibly allegedly put her DNA on to, uh, or hopefully, you know, find her DNA to uh, put her in either one of these locations. Hey, we're sending over this uh, item from his bedroom. See if you can maybe possibly find or put, allegedly, some DNA on this so we can get Stephen Avery for this crime. No DNA of Teresa Hallbach was ever found inside the trailer where you know the rape and stabbing and uh, alleged cutting off of her hair with a knife took place. Nothing, they found absolutely no evidence that Teresa Hallbach was ever inside this trailer. If any of this actually took place in Stephen Avery's bedroom, this is some Dexter level cleanup. People with extremely low IQs were able to clean up this crime scene that made it indetectable by anything or anyone. These are the two smartest criminal masterminds of all time. Talks about how all of Stephen Avery's DNA was found in the front of the car, none in the back of the car, while all of Teresa Hallbach's DNA was found in the cargo area, the back of the RAV4. There was no mixture of Teresa Hallbuck's and Stephen Avery's DNA in the back. So if he was bleeding that much that it was getting over everything in the front of the car, there would have been some mixture, in my opinion, of her blood and his blood in the back of the RAV4 in the cargo area where her blood was found. States that months after the RAV4 was found, remember the RAV4 was found in November 2005, and this took place in April 2006. Sherry Coolhan was sent a swab and she was told it was from the hood latch of the RAV4. She states she was not present when this swab from the hood latch of the RAV4 was taken and she didn't test it for blood. So again, if Stephen Avery is bleeding everywhere, he would have uh, bled on this hood latch that they didn't bother to test for his blood talks about when they tested the RAV4 key. She used the entire DNA sample, which is odd because they usually save half of it or at least some of it in case it needs to be retested or for further testing. States that the small amount of DNA found on the key could have been put there by a rubbing a toothbrush on it. Now, Jerry Buting asked Sherry Coolan, if that was possible, if it could be placed there by rubbing a toothbrush on it. And she confirmed that it could have been. States that if someone had planted DNA on the key, the result would look the same as what she found, meaning she can't tell if it was planted or not, so it could have been planted. It doesn't change the results of her test, whether it's planted or actually showed up there Honestly, uh, and they did not find any of Teresa Hallbach's DNA on the key that was found in Stephen Avery's bedroom. You know, the key to the RAV4 that she presumably used every single day. Not a speck of Teresa Hallbach's DNA was on it. Now, it was later theorized that that key was cleaned 
and Stephen Avery's DNA was allegedly planted on it, which makes much, which makes a lot of sense. If zero, zero, zero of Teresa Halbach's DNA is found on her key that she uses every day, but Stephen Avery's is found on it, that's a good way to get it there. Clean it, put his on it, allegedly. They tested the 22 caliber rifle that was found in Stephen Avery's bedroom that is not even his. That doesn't mean he allegedly couldn't have shot it, but it's not his. It belongs to the landlord um, of Stephen Avery's trailer. There was no back splatter of blood on the rifle, which sometimes happens when shot at close range. They tested the piece of the garage floor they took out of Stephen Avery's garage that also had zero DNA evidence of Teresa Halbach. But, but, now this is a big but, they did find some of Stephen Avery's DNA on that piece of uh, cement uh, garage floor that they took out of Stephen Avery's garage, which would be completely normal because it is Stephen Avery's garage. So you're going to find his DNA all over that place, but that's big because it, that means that it was not cleaned because it would have gotten rid of all of the DNA. Not just Teresa Hallbox, they would have found zero DNA on it if someone had cleaned it with bleach or something else. They wouldn't have found Stephen Avery's DNA either, but because they found Stephen Avery's DNA, it shows that it was not cleaned, showing that uh, Teresa Hallbox was likely never in that garage. Sherry also confirms that they found zero DNA evidence of Brendan Dassey in either location in regards to the crime scene. So not only is there zero Teresa Hallbach DNA in any of these places, there is zero DNA of Brendan Dassey in any of these places. Jerry Buting states that between 2004 and 2006, there were 50 reports of contamination coming out of her lab, and seven of those errors were her, which is well above average. She had more mistakes than anybody else over that uh, two-year period. I believe it was actually 18 months that they looked at it, but uh, she had more errors than anyone else. Jerry Buting states that out of all of the tests that were done, not a single piece of DNA was found in the garage except for the bullet that magically appeared months later, much like the key. Now the key was found after seven or eight searches of Stephen Avery's trailer, but that just magically appeared. They didn't find the bullet until March of 2006, many, many months after the searches were done and completed. They decided to go back out. Allegedly, maybe, probably because they're like, we have nothing on Stephen Avery. We have to put something of uh, with Teresa Hallbach's DNA somewhere in the trailer or garage so we can get him for this crime. So the bullet that magically appeared in the garage months later and to find the DNA on the bullet, not only did they find it months later, but to find the DNA on the bullet, Sherry had to deviate from normal protocol, um, but she did not state she did that in her report. So she did not do the regular testing that was needed to be done on this bullet. She had to do something that she stated she had never done, not one time in her career before, to ever find DNA on an item. And she did that to find DNA on this bullet. And not only did she do that, she didn't report. It. This police work, this investigation, these investigators, these experts are absolutely terrible at their jobs. I don't know if it's because it's a small town and they don't have a lot of money, so they hire whoever to do whatever they can, but just imagine living in a town, a city, a state where all of this is allowed to happen and nothing comes from it. Nothing ever changes. It's it's crazy. I mean, there are so many, so many mistakes made. It's just, it's mind-boggling to me. It's bonkers. Well, leave some comments below on your thoughts of the case up until this point. It's insane to me. It's absolutely insane. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you again soon.